15, but I figure we'll wait another minute or two. Is that okay with everybody in the room? Good, thank you. You okay with this water bottle here? <laughs> I'm sorry? I get it. That means to go. Awesome. So here's a question. Has anybody heard the story about the tree that falls in the forest, and if no one is there, does it make a sound? Hmm. Can you prove that? Here's the thing. Why do I bring this up? Because who here is proud to be a part of Century 21 Affiliated? Who here is proud to be a part of the Century 21 brand? Who here enjoys making a difference in people's lives? All right, now, the problem is, as an organization, we need everyone. We can only do so much, and I'm going to show you a little bit about what we do on your behalf, but we can only take it to a certain level. We need your support in getting out the word about the brand. So, for example, you might have heard this this morning. We are the number one brand in brand awareness, most recognized name in real estate, most respected in real estate. Why is that? It's because of each and every one of you. So give yourselves a round of applause. Wow. I know. It's almost lunch. OK. As the Century 21 brain trust, if you will, you should be proud of the fact that in all industries, not just real estate, Century 21 was the fa fastest growing franchise in the United States of America. OK? Powerful. We also laddered up. How many people were in Chicago for this? The National Geographic documentary on the home. How many people were even aware that we laddered up with National Geographic and did this? Okay. So later on, when I got on stage during the general session, I'm going to give you a link. And that link will take you to a site that you can share with your clients and share as you will. It's a powerful documentary about the home and about the home, especially during the COVID crisis, and how real estate worked to basically keep the economy flowing and flowing strongly. So again, I will give you that link later. If anyone wants it after, before that, you can see me after this class. Now, globally, we have 86 countries and territories that we're operating in. Other real estate companies have a larger number, but they put any number out there as long as they ink something. We don't do that. We're saying we operate in 86 countries and territories with 155,000 relentless sales professionals across 14,250 offices. You are relentless. You go above and beyond on behalf of your clients. These are the messages that we need to get out there. And why is this important? Well, here's the thing. If you leave here today with anything, leave here with this. We are a society of threes. We are naturally inclined to accept things in three parts. Look at the world around you. Look at your own world. You have morning, afternoon, night. You have breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Every religion, every major religion, is based on a three. The one I know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. If you're into the environment, you have people, planet, prosperity, reduce, reuse, recycle. You have three outs, you have three little pigs, you have three blind mice. Clint Eastwood said what in the movies? Make my day. Nike tells people to do what? Just do it. Your realtor association, local, state, and national. When you were younger, did your parents say to you or your guardian, I'll give you to the count of five to clean up that room? It was always to the count of three, wasn't it? 
So when you break things into three parts, and here's the three that you should always remember, and it's powerful. Repetition is recognition. Repetition is recognition. So if we go out and we tell people we give 121%, we abide by these brilliant basics. How many people are aware of the brilliant basics? All righty, how many people here have been on Workplace? Century 21 Workplace. Okay, fantastic, we need to get those numbers up. But these brilliant basics took a little while to come up with, but each and every one of these are important. They're important to you, yes, but more importantly, these make up the reasons why you are able to continue about being real estate entrepreneurs. Because this is why, let me, let me pause here for a second. How many people in the room are realtors? Okay, now, do you believe there's a realtor image problem? Show your hands. Come on, come on, it's okay, nobody's taking, you know, the CIA can only hear us, they can't see us. I think, wait, any of those little bulb things in here? Okay, so here's the bottom line with that. If there were a realtor image problem, how is it that 91% of sellers, uh, excuse me, buyers, and 88% of sellers use who when they have a real estate need? You. And they've been told for 30 years, that's how long I've been in this, they've been told, they being consumers, have been told for 30 years, you don't need a realtor, you could do this on your own. In fact, in three easy payments of 1999, you can have your very own buying and selling real estate package. Never saw those? <laughs> They're all over the place, still, to this day. And you always want to say to yourself, why are you airing at one o'clock in the morning? If it's so easy, why aren't you doing it? Okay, anyway, I digress. All right? The image problem exists internally. You know it, I know it, the rest of the industry knows it. And that's where we came up with our mission statement to defy that mediocrity and deliver extraordinary experiences, okay? But these brilliant basics, if you look at them, I'm transparent, I build trust, I consciously communicate. These are the things that consumers want from you. And then we took it and we said, we have these house habits, always elevate. What if, open the house, 121% wins. You give 121% to your customers and clients each and every day. So it was all about moving this industry so what's the difference between Century 21 and all the other real estate brands? Because there's this sea of sameness. You could be saying, as a company, we are moving this industry from transactional alone to experiential. Do people want experiences? Do you guys want experiences? When you spend your time and money with an organization, what do you expect? Positive experience, right? Some people, like me, I'll pay extra when I want coffee and I have access to Starbucks, I'll pay the extra money. I don't care. Why? Because I like what they do as a company. When I fly, I choose United. When I buy shoes, I like buying Allbirds and Toms because they give back. And who or what industry can you name that does more to give back than real estate? Now, there's, there's no answer, so I expect no hands to go up because that's who you are, that's what you do, that's your why. So we said, okay, we're moving from transactional to experiential. We're gonna start out telling the world, each and every one of you, those 155,000 relentless sales professionals, okay, across the world, and then the brilliant basics to identify so we just don't say we're different, we prove we're different through these brilliant basics and we're, and we're building on and continue to grow and that's why we're the number one franchise growth in 2021 because we have this culture of delivering the extraordinary. And for two plus decades, quality service has been built into our DNA. How many people use Real Satisfied? Okay, that number should be 100%. Why is that important? Real Satisfied is the quality service surveys. And if you're staying away from them, I would love to know why. Because the bottom line is, whenever you, again, when you buy something, okay, you are gonna spend your time and money on another organization. What do people do today? They look for other people's comments. You book a new trip. What is the first thing you do? You read, yeah, you go to TripAdvisor and you read the comments. Okay, most people do. Most, and, and for those people who don't, they typically have someone in their life who does. 
all right? That's what these, these surveys do. That's what Real Satisfied does. It tells, because we can tell the world how wonderful you are, and we do that. But it is more powerful when a third party tells the world how wonderful you are. Can we agree to that? And that's where we're trying to go with our communications as well. This is our year, and not only because it's our 50th, although we do intend to celebrate, but because we came out of one of the biggest shifts in our industry and our world's history stronger than ever. We have 50 years as industry leaders and are the most recognized and respected name in real Anybody estate. Anybody see this before? And we actually continued our growth as a global powerhouse. How? We didn't wait to see what would happen next. We created it. Your 121% attitude led the way. You invested in virtual learning with over 66,000 courses taken. You gave virtual tours and proved your leadership with provocative ideas that drove. Okay, so this video basically can be found on Workplace. This video can be shared by you. This video was created because this year was our 50th anniversary as an organization. 50 years looking ahead to the next 50. You can find it on Workplace. Now, we all know about this, correct? Customer expectations that are an all-time high and what I tend to say often because repetition is recognition. I try my best to always tell through myself and through our senior leadership team that consumers should demand extraordinary services extraordinary experiences. Why? Because they deserve it. Consumers deserve our mission. That's where it came up with. And if we all get out there and tell the world that we are the brand that is delivering extraordinary experiences, then our vision comes true that we will be the most sought after real estate brand in the world. We want to get to that point. Again, it's going to be hard to get there because there's so much competition. And the competition does a great job of doing what? Muddying the waters? Okay, who said that? Awesome, so how do they muddy the water? What do they use? Marketing, i.e. communications, messaging, storytelling, and that's, when I want, that's really what I'm talking to you here about, and I'm gonna get into more detail. They do a great job of communicating that. Think of it from this perspective. Who has the best real estate data in the industry? Okay, here, hold on. We do. You do. But who do consumers believe? Zillow. Zillow. Why? Because they were great at storytelling. They were great at messaging. All right? Another real estate brand comes out and goes on to the stock exchange, let's just say the brand uh, begins with a C, okay? And they tell the world, we have the best technology ever, all right? We're different, and there's others too that tell the world this. And then all of a sudden, Wall Street starts taking a look, and now we're starting to see articles more and more and more in the stock going down, because they realized, hmm, maybe they're just a traditional brokerage like everyone else. Maybe, maybe not, I don't know. But what I do know is they did a great job messaging and communicating and telling stories that they had technology no one else has. By the way, do you have that technology? You do, all right? Technology has been in a, a story all to itself and that's for another time. So the idea is we need to tell the stories, we need to communicate, we need that messaging, that's what I'm talking to you about again. We are celebrating, like I said, 50 years of being in the business. For 50 years, Century 21 agents have proven there's nothing we won't do or can't do. That's 50 years of seeing possibilities and seeing them through. How many people 50 have years seen of this doing one? what everyone said couldn't Couple be of done. Hands. All right, this is a 50th 50 years anniversary video. Where can you find it? You know what? You can find it on Workplace. What else can you find on Workplace, by the way, since no one is on it or very few people admitted to being on it? This is where you can ideate, create, share. You can find ideas for storytelling, for messaging, for communicating that others like you are willing to share with you. That's the beauty of this brand. It's interesting to find out 
that brokers from Dan all the way down to the smallest Century 21 office will ideate and share on a regular basis because they care about what. And when you're going to meet your president and CEO later on at the general session, he tells all of us, first and foremost, everything that you do should be to help our customers and their agents grow their business. That's it. That's what we're doing, and that's what I do as Director of Public Relations for you at Century 21. Very quickly, you have any stories, anything unique, different, how you're going above and beyond. You just listed a commercial property that was once a strip mall and is now condos. Repurposed assets, if anybody's in the commercial field. Anything along those lines, you now have a friend at Century 21. Peter Mosca. Forget the L because we couldn't use middle initials. Peter.Mosca at century21.net. You have stories to tell, I want to know about it. You know what stories are going to start popping up and they already did, we had one in New Jersey. The Halloween listings, the spooky houses, all these things. Do you have anything like that? Are you listing a property right now that has that? That story is an easy story to tell right now, okay? Anything and everything, I'm your friend, I want to help you to get those stories out. Because ultimately, what do you want to become? You want to become known as the local market expert. So those numbers that I talked to you about earlier, those numbers from 91% and 88%, the number one reason why, and this holds true even higher percentages for the younger crowds, the millennials and the Gen Zs, they want your local market knowledge. And knowledge is different. Words matter. There's plenty of information online. You possess the knowledge. So use the word knowledge as often as you possibly can. Catch yourself, change it from information to knowledge. You possess the knowledge. I love this quote, dear optimist, pessimist, and realist. While you guys were busy arguing about the glass of water, I drank it. I just love that, okay? Get out there, what, make it happen. PR, what is it? Using the media to carry positive stories. Positive stories. Positive stories. So another three, always be positive. There is absolutely no need to go out there and be negative when you talk to the media. And the media today is newspapers, newsletters, radio, TV. So those are the traditional ones, okay? So old man starts out with the traditional side. But now we have bloggers, podcasters, influencers, okay? All these other media. And hey, by the way, is everyone in this room a media creator? Yes, you are. Or you really should be. And it's what you communicate that I'm going to be talking about a little bit later on. So use the media to carry positive stories about you. PR is different than marketing and advertising. PR, you have to pitch. You have to sell. Pitching is another word for selling. Your stories to get them covered. Okay? Marketing and advertising, what do you do? Pay, and it gets done. PR, different. But it works in synergy with marketing and advertising because you should have a consistent messaging because of what I talked about already. Consistent messaging, repetition is recognition. Three things, honesty. You cannot be dishonest. Others in this world, from corporate CEOs to athletes to actors to, I apologize up front, politicians, <laughs> can get away with being dishonest. You, on the other hand, cannot. And nor should you even attempt it. Why? Because you can always be positive, all right? Second, transparency. Transparency equals confidence. I love these three words, you ready? I don't know. What? Somebody in this world today, in the year 2021, is willing to say, I don't know? Yes, I am. And you know what? That's transparent, and that's credible. 
Once you try to lie, once you try to sell, your audiences are going to tune you out, okay? And then multi-communication, that's a big part of it. So you have to have a plan, all right? Everyone loves social media, but what do you do on social media and how does it leverage to helping you grow your business, okay? And you have some sessions, I think, later on about social media that you can attend. What do reporters want? In the journalism world, there's those five W's and the H, who, what, where, when, why, and how, okay? And it used to be, in PR, we would always focus on who. Who, 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 no longer, okay? The biggest or the number one W that you need to focus on is why. Why should I care? And when a reporter says, why should I care? Or a blogger says, why should I care? Or a podcaster says, why should I care? They're saying, how does this impact my audience? Why does my audience care about what you're saying or about what you're pitching or about what you're trying to get into my particular media? Why is it news and who cares? Those are the three things that you have to focus on. Now, how do you make a story more compelling? Well, there's so many different ways. And hey, by the way, I see some of you taking pictures. If anybody wants this, just shoot me an email, peter.mosca at century21.net. I'll send you the PDF, okay? So you have all these stories and ways, but I'm gonna focus on something called newsjacking, okay? Newsjacking is interesting, and the Oreo cookie company, really, in my humble opinion, IMHO, are the originators of newsjacking. Anyone follow the NFL any longer? Yes, I purposely said it that way because I haven't in like 10 years. Okay, so anybody know? Okay, yes. Years ago, there was a Super Bowl and the lights went out. Does anybody remember this? Power outage at the Super Bowl. Oreo cookie almost immediately tweets, power out, no problem, you can still dunk in the dark. Wow, that's newsjacking at its finest. That's taking advantage of a story that the, uh, that the nation is involved in and using it to your advantage. So number one, choose the right story if you're gonna think about newsjacking, okay? It has to ladder up to your why, to the brand's why, to your company's why. And are there stories? There are so many in this industry. Do people love real estate? Yeah, outside of the industry. People love real estate, Marithius. Did I say that right? Marithius, okay. They love real estate. Saturday Night Live three months ago or four months ago did a skit on real estate porn. Okay? There's billions of searches on Google every month. There's an HGTV flip show for every major market in the country. All right, people love real estate. It's real estate, it's food, okay? How many times, oh, the flavors. They just brought out the flavors. Enough with the flavors, just give me a bowl of pasta. Anyway, but they love food. And then they love their pets too, do they not? All right, all of these things they love, but both, ultimately they love real estate. Now, number two, think before you act. Here's where you, you need someone in your life the most important person in your life is that person who knows nothing about real estate. You run all your communications by this person. If this person, quote unquote, gets it, you have a solid piece of communication. Why do I say this? Because we communicate as if everyone knows everything about real estate, and they don't. They don't, and nor should they. Why should they? They're not, you know, unless they're you know, property investors and they get to, and even some property investors still don't know. Think of it this way. One thing, if you haven't figured it out yet, is I like to look at things and I like to blow them up. So I'll ask you this question. Have you ever heard of the show, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Yeah, right? We've all heard of this. Now, did anyone ask themselves, why is the show called, Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? I have the answer for you. Because on average, the American public has a fifth grade level of knowledge. All right, let that sink in. Now let it sink in from the perspective of your industry, your business. Anybody been in the business more than 20 years? 
Okay, more than 20 years. What did the contract look like 20 years ago? Yeah, it was like a page, maybe two. And what is it now? Eight, 10, 12 addendums. Yeah, okay. All right, so why do I say this? Because it's hard. It's a comprehensive, complex business you're in. We can't expect audiences to understand it. Don't talk as if they understand it, all right? Because once you talk over someone's head, what are they gonna do? They're gonna tune you out, that's right, okay? So where do you want to try to news jack is in the very beginning, like Oreo Cookie has done, and I'll show you some good examples, but I'm gonna start out with the bad first. Sears, right after Hurricane Sandy hit the Northeast, they come out with this tweet. Did Hurricane Sandy affect your city? Well, get your generators, air mattresses, and more in one place. Never try to leverage people's tragedies. If Sears would have said, hey, water, you need water? Come by our stores, we'll give you bottled water. Something along those lines, that kind of a tweet would have went hands down a lot further. Because what, did, what, what is Sears doing here? Capitalizing and focusing on who? themselves. You need to focus, always focus, always be client-centric, okay, in all your communication. Second, Golf Channel. Tweet your golf dream on the 50th anniversary of MLK's I Have a Dream speech. Hashtag dream day, I have a dream that. And I would have loved to have replied to this in August of 13. I would have put, I have a dream that people of color can play at Augusta National. People of color can play at private courses all across America, and they have the audacity to use MLK. Just horrible. And then you think that's bad. Watch this one. This is from, and by the way, Scott Stratton. You see the guy's name, Scott Stratton? He's a marketing guy. His company's called Unmarketing. You don't want to know about consumer insight and how to reach consumers in a more effective way? Subscribe to his blog. Subscribe to his Twitter account. I only know him because he spoke at a top agent and leadership seminar several years ago. He's brilliant. He's very good at what he does, does. Anyway, he retweets this. Check this out from a coach. Ready? Have you disappeared? Get noticed by sports employers. Okay, not bad, right? Okay. All right, not bad. Then she writes, Malaysian Airlines 370 has vanished. Do you feel like employers can't find you? Let's get your quote unquote black box engaged. Let's start the pings, okay? This is horrible. This is absolutely horrible, okay? Terrible, but how about some good examples? All right, number one. Now, I know of them, I don't follow them. Other people do follow the Kardashians. A few years ago, when was this? So I got a date, 2015, there was some kind of thing about, I think Kim, Kim was it? She wore a dress and we're like, oh, it's blue and black. No, it's white or gold. So what does Dunkin' Donuts do? They put out a tweet. Doesn't matter if it's blue or black or white or gold, they still taste delicious. Hashtag the dress. Millions of dollars of free PR because they wanted to be, they got themselves interviewed on national TV, owned the social media airwaves for quite some time. Snickers, anybody follow go uh, soccer? No soccer fans. Oh, gosh, you guys got one. Here we go. Beautiful thing. Soccer's great, by the way. Uh, everyone, don't, you know, blow up that whole American mindset that you have to follow football, basketball, and baseball. It's soccer. Soccer's the original football. It's the beautiful game. Anyway, there's a player called Luis Suarez, who, during a World Cup match, decided to bite his opponent. So Snickers comes out with a tweet and says, hey, Luis Suarez, next time you're hungry, just grab a Snickers. More satisfying than Italian, hashtag Luis Suarez. <laughs> all right, that's beautiful, all right? Now, one, pl one plug for our brand. Years ago, there was a show called Breaking Bad. Anybody watch Breaking Bad? Come on, I gotta see some hands for that. All right, a lot of people watch Breaking Bad, so what did we do? The night it ended, the night the show ended at 10 p.m. or 10, 15 p.m. on that Sunday, we put this up. We said, you know, a listing, 150,000, use the home. And we put the listing on here, you know, quiet um, Albuquerque ranch, fit for a king, okay? In-ground pool, so if you watched it, he was known as a king. The pool played a lot of uh, 
importance in a lot of the episodes. Secret crawl space, great fun. That's where he hid his money, you know, in the crawl space. Near an airport, that was a big part of the episode. Motivate, motivated seller must be out by Sunday, 10, 15 p.m. All right, this generated significant PR value for us. Our CEO at the time, Rick Davidson, was interviewed on national TV, local TV, was in every single real estate trade out there. Positive newsjacking, something to take advantage of to get your story told. So, controlling the narrative, it's all about storytelling. We have been, this human life we've had, whether you believe it's been around for X amount of years is not the case. The, the issue is every single generation going back to the cavemen, stories have been a part of the human experience. They told their stories through their hieroglyphics. Higher, no, forget it. <laughs> Number two, religious books, okay? No matter, again, what religion you belong to, but who wrote them? People like us, and they're still here, all right? Politics, t tell me a politician who doesn't tell a story, okay? <laughs> Shakespeare, all about stories, soap operas. Anybody watch soap operas? Anybody know about soap operas? Okay, got 15 minutes. Uh, by the way, you all watch soap operas. Anybody watch wrestling? Soap opera. Anybody watch anything on Bravo? Soap opera. Anybody watch the news? Soap opera. Okay? Soap opera, soap opera. Very quick story. Here we go. I come from a dysfunctional family. My father, when he was alive, had MS, multiple sclerosis. Never saw him walk. I have an older brother, older sister, younger sister. The only thing that kept this dysfunctional family together, and a mother too, sorry. Sorry, Mom. Is days of our lives. We would go to school. We'd come home, and he'd tell us about the episodes, and then when VHS came around, we all watched on the couch. We ate our dinners on the couch. There was no such thing as a dinner table, all right? And the main character on Days of Our Lives was Dr. Marlena Evans, okay? Played by Deidre Hall. So, going back to my father, he was celebrating his 80th birthday, and here's a man who, from as long as he can talk about it, only wanted one thing out of this life and that was to move on to the next, all right? He was all about going to see his Lord. Oh, I can't wait, blah, blah, blah. So, I tell you this because there's nothing that you can purchase that's gonna get him excited, but his son knew, so what I did was I got the press agent for Deidre Hall. I wrote her a letter, I said, basically summarizing, I come from a dysfunctional family, giving you everything that I just told you about, right? So the day of the party, we're in the yard, backyard of my mother's house, we're all having a party, and then all of a sudden I see my wife running up the driveway. Pete, Pete, there's a limo out front. There's a limo out front. I'm like, holy shit. I go running out. I go to the door. I open the door. It's my aunt and uncle from Connecticut. <laughs> they didn't want to drive. All right. Half hour later, I get a call on my Blackberry, so you can see how far away this was, how long ago it was. And it's a private number, I don't recognize it, but thankfully I pick it up. Hello, this is Peter speaking. Hello, Peter. This is Deidre Hall. I'm like, oh my gosh, Deidre Hall. Wow, I can't, oh, I read that letter and I made sure that I was going to call you on this day. I said, thank you so much. I'm gonna give the phone to my father, but remember, he has MS, he's hard of hearing, blah, blah, blah. So I said, Dad, someone wants to wish you a happy birthday. I give him the phone. Hello? Hello? What? I grabbed the phone. All right. Um, uh, can you bear with me a second, Deidre? Uh, I got I to gotta talk to him a little bit. I said, Dad, Marlena Evans is on the phone. She wants to wish you a happy birthday. Okay, now he knows who it is. So he picks up the phone. Hello? Hello? Marlena? What are you doing with that John, John Black? He's not good for you. He's not good. He's going to hurt you. He's going to hurt you. All right. My mother picks up the phone. Uh, Deidre Hall, yeah, my husband loved you more than me for like two decades, okay? I just want you to know that. Not in a negative way, I'm paraphrasing. I get back on the phone, thank you so much. Now, when we talk about delivering extraordinary experiences and going above and beyond, that's a story, right? But to kick it up, to do the Century 21 thing, three weeks later, I get three manila envelopes in the mail. One addressed to me, one addressed or the photo, to me, dear Peter, I forget what she wrote, the other, and it, one photo, a different photo, dear Al, 
She wrote something directly to my father, and then a new photo, another new photo, dear Lenora, blah, blah, blah. Three different photographs, three different messages. That's what giving 121% is all about. I share that story, yes, because it reminds me of my mom and dad, and that's always a good thing. But I share it from our perspective here today about going that extra, going above and beyond, okay? So stories like that. And you have stories every single day what you do, you have stories to tell, all right? Now some of the stories, number one tip, build, uh, piggyback on a built-in narrative. First time home buyers, there's information out there, but they still don't get it. And rightfully so, it's difficult. Who's there to tell them? You are, okay? First time home buyers. Quarterly trends. NAR puts out statistics every month, and they put it out from a national level. You could put it out from a local level, okay? Because your local media, your local marketplace wants to know what's happening on a local level. Do they not? Yes, they do. That's why they come to you for that local market knowledge. Share it through PR. Leverage the market knowledge. Local TV need us as much as you need them. They don't have the staffs. Vicky Montagudo, one of our top brand ambassadors in Washington, the state, did this one time for a news reporter, and now she's been on four or five times since in the last two and a half years. She even went on TV during the, during the height of the pandemic with gloves and a hat and the whole deal. You think it's crazy, but people remember that, all right? Number four, tell the human interest, interest stories. This Shannon Clark of Century 21 Jackson Real Estate gave her kidney to her best friend's father. Great story, I told it. Here's a little tagline that I love. Century 21 is a, is a brand of go-getters, but also go-givers. We have a relationship, and I'll get to it in a second. Number six, call, cover all the reasons why people move. Everybody just covers the one. Nearly 60% of the population moves every year. Family, jobs, careers, livability, climate, environment, new start. And hey, by the way, you remember how everybody was leaving Chicago? Does everybody remember these stories? Oh, people hate Chicago. They're leaving. What's happening right now? Anybody in Chicago? Anybody see the construction going up in Chicago? Maybe that story needs to get told, huh? All right, I'm hoping that your president and CEO is gonna get on Maria Bartolomo. Did I say that right? Anybody watch Maria Bartolomo on Fox? No? Okay, well there's someone named Maria Bartolomo and she's with, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> say it again, no, don't. I thought you were saying no, like I don't like this woman, stop saying her name. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, I can read an audience. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So anyway, one of the talking points that I shared with him was we should talk about how p people are moving back to the city, that maybe that migration that the media love to talk about really wasn't that true. Number seven, don't forget other property types. There's more than just ex ex existing single family homes. Number eight, use our, what we're doing as marketing. Century 21 Northeast did a great campaign called the Relentless Senior of the Day. Philanthropy, this is what I was referring to earlier. Easter Seals has been our philanthropic partner for 42 years. They're actually in Chicago. Easter Seals helps millions of persons living with disabilities, their families, and their caregivers thrive in local markets across North America. You should be proud of the fact that your brand has been their partner for 42 years and has helped to raise $129 million over the course of those years, okay? And number 10, this is when you open a new office, you get a new designation, all of these different things that you can tell the media. The news release, still your best PR tool. A lot of people are saying, oh, the news release is old, the news release is old. Baloney, it's still the best way to get your story told, okay? And a long-winded way to say something. I most strenuously object to the all too common phenomena of the utilization by certain writers of an altogether excessive quantity and obscurity of florid vocabulary and Lambrink syntactical arrangements in the supposed service of the propositions they are attempting to promulgate, which propositions, in fact, invariably suffer under such stifling weight rather than deriving any benefit whatsoever therefrom. You know what that is? Another three. Less is more, okay? Less is more when you're communicating and doing PR. Hey guys, I can't see anything on my screen. Is the server down? We'll check. Let's check out the network. Well, should we ping the router or just tell them it to the server? Might want to give it a kill. 
kill the TCPIP. So we just programmed the flux compositor to fire sesquipedalia flux agitation to achieve hyperextended bovonic outputs that can translate enough terabyte of code to override any network saturation. Yeah, I'm not sure that'll allow our client to reroute any quantum quasi motor denominator compressions. Sure, well, we just quark the paradisian inputs for zeta reactions that will completely pump any bombastic ramifications without reversing the Tron matrix beta or blowing the submicroactive uplink and fry the entire right, system. The entire system. Uh, hey guys, I uh, found the problem. Um, I just didn't have my monitor turned on. All right, that's what somebody called into Mark Zuckerberg. Hey, I, I unplugged the plug. Okay. Lastly, PR Studio. Anybody have been on 21 Online before? Okay. Five, five minute mark. 21 Online, if you go to the search bar, you type PR and hit the space bar. The first line item will be PR Studio. PR Studio is like having your own public relations agency. Question? Oh, you, you're aware of it. Okay, thank you. Most people are not, okay, and that's okay. Here's one thing you have to remember about communications. Oh, let me ask you this. What is the primary reason why personal relationships, business relationships, or friendships break down? Lack of communications. It's very difficult, easy, but difficult, okay? So we can communicate, 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 but it really needs to be you know, accepted by the audience. That's why we try to communicate things, what? That help you to grow personally and professionally, everything that we do. Okay, Century 21 PR Studio, you go there, you sign in. When you sign in, one of the highlighted items will say news releases, you click on that, and up will come templates and folders like this. And what I try to do now is I try to update this twice a month. So why do I tell you this? You can send news releases out to your local media. Once you put in information about yourself, your company, your zip code, your phone number, not only does it auto-populate auto it into the template, but it also creates a media list for you. So you can send out a news release. So you can look, you could go on realtor.org and you can find out when NAR is releasing the statistics this month, and it's usually around the 22nd of every month. And on the 21st or thereabouts of every month, you can send this housing commentary template to your local media and basically say, national real estate numbers coming out tomorrow, local expertise available to discuss Chicagoland, to discuss Schaumburg, to discuss Wisconsin, whatever it is, or whatever market you serve. Here's the other thing. What this also gives to you, as you can see, 20% down payment myth. Does that still exist? It does. There's information, information, information online, but most people still think they need 20% to buy a house, all right? Everybody, oh, it's challenging the inventory, which it was, right? But to me, that's a negative. So what did I do? I turned it around and said, 2021, best year to list property. Stop talking about that negative stuff and talk about the positive stuff, okay? Caring for pets, bridge loans, most people have no idea what that is. Lead-based paint, home sales surge during pandemic, commentary, reporter introduction. A great way to start out in a relationship with the reporter, because that's what, what you want to do. And if you are quotable, accountable, and responsible to those reporters, to those members of the media, they will come back to you. It's not a coincidence that the same people are interviewed over and over and over. Lastly, what I want to leave you with is this. I always want you to challenge the status quo. Progress happens when we challenge the status quo. Mr. Goodman. What makes you think you're qualified for this job? Oh! Ah! Stop punching me! Stop punching Please! Me. Think differently. Thank you so much for spending your time with me here today. Hopefully you got a good return on your investment. And remember, if you have a story, I want to know about it. Thank you so much.
on the button. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Face to face. You